Hello folks, my name is Jason Sage with Jagus LLC and today we're going to talk about workflow in VTiger CRM version 5.1.0 specifically two issues that came up with one of our clients that um, was very frustrating and we found the solutions and we wanted to share them with you. For starters, we're going to go into the workflow area here of VTiger. So you go to settings and then in the settings area on the bottom right icon, that's the link that we followed, workflows. We're specifically talking about automating an email and two issues in there, the dollar sign and a problem with URI requests being too large. So to start, let's just go into uh, workflow here um, in the contacts module. And our main issue that we're going to be talking about is when we're making a task of the type send email. So I'm going to click the edit button for that to go in there and here's our issue. If we have a large body email, this one's really not that big yet, but sometimes when you go to hit save you'll get an error message that'll come right here. Instead of seeing this nice page that just came back where everything looks like it worked fine, sometimes you get an error message that says URI request too large. Error 413. Now we've seen this where it doesn't happen immediately like the first couple times you're saving let's say you're saving an email oops you made a mistake you did a little test and it sent you the email and you didn't like some text in there so you edited it again sometimes it'll be the third or fourth time that we go to save it that this error will pop up now the solution for that we found actually a solution that was posted on the VTiger bug tracker it was error or issue number 6455 and the what needs to be changed, you might have to refer to your hosting provider to make this code change for you. It's a patch to solve this uh, issue where it blows up. See, basically, when you submit a URL to the website, when you're submitting information, the default type usually is the, what's called the get method, and that puts everything on the URL line, meaning up here on the top of my browser, we have the domain, we have the file that we're looking for, but then we have a question mark, and after that question mark, well, from the question mark over to the right is considered the, the information that we're, we're sending to the server or the parameters alright now you'll see this with Google Maps and things it allows it's nice because it allows you to bookmark your page where you are etc but if you have a long email body and we're when we hit save we're actually submitting all that information on top of that what's called the URI actually in this case um, what happens is you can overrun the buffer that's accepting these requests on the server side so there's another method that's not called get that's called post and that's all we're going to do is we're going to change a file that makes it so that when you go to save your workflows, the information is sent to your web server that's hosting your VTiger using a post method. So, again, you can probably might have to refer, you can do this yourself if you are savvy and, and have to know how to do it. Otherwise, you might have to refer to your hosting provider who's hosting your VTiger for you. But inside of your VTiger directory, there's a Smarty folder. It doesn't notice the uppercase S. Templates. There's a folder com underscore VTiger workflow. And inside of that folder, Smarty Templates com VTiger workflow, there's a file called edittask.tpl. The extension stands for template. Notice the uppercase E and the uppercase T in edit task T TPL. On line 23, you'll find a line that looks like this in a stock installation of VTiger CRM 5.10. And by simply, after this last quote here, but in between the greater than sign and the quote, you put a space, the word method, an equal sign, and the word post, and then save the file. The URI too large error will go away and won't rear its ugly head um, when you're trying to get your job done, getting those workflows programmed. The other issue is there's a nice feature here to start with. When you're editing an email, you can grab information out of the database for the entity that you're working with. Now, we have other videos on how to actually really work with these it talks about email marketing and how to do templates um, we've got like a three-part email how to and that has some important information about how to design your templates so if we're working with a workflow here which happens to be for contacts um, when I've created this one you want to make you know it's automatically only giving you the options for contacts um, but for more information about inserting variables and such we have other videos on, on what the rules are but for here it's pretty simple we have a pick list of variables that we can pull from the contact entity and when you put these in what it does I'm gonna clear this email out so you can see what the result I'm gonna grab a field I'm gonna just grab I don't know first name account name here it is or I guess we're dealing with accounts or something um, 
account name. It puts a dollar sign and it has information after that dollar sign that when you send the email out will get replaced with data that comes from the database. Well the problem is we were trying to show some money so if we had ten thousand dollars okay but what happened is this was getting this dollar sign in the first ten was getting parsed out as a as one of these types of values in the end email it, you know would be, there's nothing that was dollar sign one zero so what we'd end up with is in their email is our, our ten thousand dollars ended up with a, a comma and the three zeros at the end the way to fix that was to use the span html tag put a dollar sign close the span tag like this with a which is a less than great uh, forward slash the word span and a greater than sign and then put the rest of the number and strange as it may seem because of the fact that you're able to do HTML emails when we put the span around the dollar sign our end result was attractive and appropriate looking for our desired result our end up end email looked like that so when you're putting in your HTML code you need to put a dollar sign in there this is what we recommend to do that so hopefully these two issues that we've outlined will help you avoid the same headaches that our client and ourselves ran into trying to solve have a good day. Thank you.